Welcome to the Ortega Path to Enlightenment. My name is George Ortega, and this is episode number 18, Means of Enlightenment Overcoming Unpleasantness. Okay, we're recording this on August 29th, 2017. And again, this show is about exploring this concept of enlightenment, what it means, how to become enlightened, how to become more enlightened. And today's theme is about really actually I think one there there are two basic goals to enlightenment you know that concern either the individual or society people in general and basically the first purpose of enlightenment is to alleviate suffering you know <laughs> basically to suffer less and the second is to feel happier so we've done shows on happiness this episode we're going to focus on how to like just overcome unpleasantness, these unpleasant, negative, you know, unpleasant feelings, emotions. Um, Okay, so it's not that unpleasant emotions don't serve a purpose because they do. Um, As a matter of fact, you know, when we were very young, before we were able to talk, before we were able to communicate our needs to our parents or caregivers, um, before we were able to take care of our needs, you know, as infants, it was important for us to be able to express unpleasantness so our parents or caregivers would be able to like know that we're hungry, we want to be fed, or we need to be changed, or we need something, you know, because again, without language, you know, infants resort to toddlers, well, I guess toddlers start talking, whatever, but, you know, especially infants resort to just these facial expressions that, that show either sadness or fear or anger, which are the three basic unpleasant emotions. All right, so, you know, this isn't about, like, completely overcoming negative emotions, because the other thing about them is that, um, according to our physiology, you know, something happens out in our environment, and generally our emotions, which are tied more to our uh, limbic system, uh, they, they respond before our cognitive processes do. I mean, the, the limbic system was developed in our brain before our cerebral cortex, which is where we do our thinking, our advanced thinking. So basically what happens is like something in the environment, like let's say, you know, historically we saw a lion or something, right? Okay, we'd, we'd become, or well, maybe something less um, obvious. I don't know, we heard a loud noise, okay? And, and basically we, we would become afraid and that fear was a messenger to us that something in, envir- in our environment needs to be attended to, all right? So like, so we hear the noise, we become afraid and all of a sudden, then we begin to wonder what it's about. It may be a danger, it may not be. You know, basically, because we are designed to ensure our survival as best we can, you know, we have this survival instinct, you know, we were designed basically to, at least over the last several, well, tens of thousands of years, really, we were designed to lean more toward these unpleasant emotions than toward the pleasant emotions in order to better ensure our survival. Okay, so what happens is like the problem is, um, well, one of the problems is like our world is far less dangerous now than it was back then. You know, I mean, there are far fewer of these, you know, hostile threats from either other animals or individuals. You know, I think there was perhaps a bit more um, tribal conflict, you know, conflicts among clans, you know, so now we live in a much more peaceful world, but we haven't yet adapted to this fully. And what happens is like, we will um, not only feel emotions and then like negative emotions, and then, you know, when we start to respond to them cognitively, you know, cognitively, which means when we, you know, decide, we start deciding what to do about them, whether to do anything or not, um, what happens is we sustain these negative emotions. 
And really, like, for the problem, the problem is societal. I mean, we, for some reason, have gotten addicted to really um, dysfunctional, unproductive, harmful media. You know, a lot of us, like, spend hours each day watching people kill each other on television, and, and the kids will spend um, hours each day playing these video games where they're killing people. And, and it's not just about killing people, it's about all these kinds of, like, unpleasant news, un unpleasant events, unpleasant scenarios that, that we see in the media, and it's also in books. It's, it's pervasive, and, you know, I, you know we, I should do an episode on this. How, how our society just immerses itself in this really harmful stimuli constantly is baffling how you know why why we do that what why it sells but but you know unfortunately what happens it does and i think to a great extent because of that um many of us basically our, our default state for a lot of us isn't really feeling happy feeling relaxed feeling calm feeling like things are all right our, our default state for a lot of us is to be concerned to be worried to be anxious to kind of like, you know, this, this fear is, is and it's, it doesn't have to be an intense fear. It could be just like a subtle, nebulous kind of an anxiety. And, you know, it's not just anxiety. A lot of us are, we're, we become angry because the world isn't the way we'd like it to be. And, and um, so, so basically, that's what this episode is about. How do we overcome this? Like, you know, it's become chronic. It's become pervasive. It's become a very unnecessary part of this modern world. I mean, it made these emotions, again, these negative emotions might have been far more necessary tens of thousands of years ago, maybe even hundreds of years ago, but they really aren't. They, they basically make people ill, cause people to die sooner, you know, just sap people of their happiness. And naturally, like, when you're in this kind of a state, it's not really very easy to, to be enlightened, you know, either as a person or as a society. All right, so again, like, there are three main um, unpleasant emotions, fear, sadness, and anger, and the problem, again, is that we sustain them. In other words, like, let's say um, we hear a loud, well, no, no, let's, um, I'm trying to think of a good example. Um, we learn, for example, about climate change or, or like we learned that like the Russians and us aren't getting along, right? So we'll read the news and, and let's say, you know, tensions are heightened, you know, or whatever. So like a lot of us, you know, might become, let's say, afraid, you know, for some, about something like that. But instead of like feeling that fear, you know, just having it tell us that something perhaps needs to be addressed. In a lot of these cases, we, we don't have control over it anyhow, but, um, you know, we have some control. But so what happens is, like, rather than just these emotions, like, telling us, giving us this message, and then we m reverting back to our calm state and just addressing whatever we need to with our cognitive abilities, with our thoughts, you know, with our actions, we maintain, we maintain this fear of, of like, you know, the Russians attacking us or we attacking them, or, you know. And like, you know, naturally the media, the, the news media knows that when people are afraid, um, they will watch the news more. And so the media isn't really concerned very much with the welfare of individuals or people as much as they are with ratings and, and making advertising revenue. So they will like stoke these kinds of fears day after day after day and if you're unfortunate enough to to not understand how unnecessary a lot of times it is to watch this stuff you know so many people watch it so like they people b get into this state of whether it's you know anger or fear or sadness it becomes chronic it's sustained all right so this this episode is about how to deal with this stuff um, and it's not just these major ones, it's like things in our life, people that like, that we um, have relations with, you know, it could be our spouse, our friends, you know, family members and all, you know, they do things that we don't like, <laughs> we do things they don't like, and this, it creates um, 
similar kinds of unpleasant feelings. And again, the problem is that we sustain them. Now, the key to this episode is like generally the way we're taught is, well, I'm going to address this. I'm going to address, you know, this person said something to me. I'm going to address, you know, you know, what's what's the solution to this or what's the solution to like, you know, climate change? What's the solution to, you know, oh, my God, I'm getting older. You know, what's going to happen with that <laughs> stuff like that? So um, basically, we're kind of like conditioned to see each of these challenges individually and try to like come up with individual responses. Now, to a certain extent, that's productive. To a certain extent, that is necessary. But the problem is that there are so many different kinds of events, stimuli, circumstances, situations that evoke these unpleasant emotions that it becomes not very effective in terms of like our, our, our use of time. It, it's, it's not a very efficient way of addressing these unpleasant emotions. So like, again, when I, <laughs> if I can get to it, this episode is about, you know, moving from very specific resolutions to all these kinds of negative experiences that we, again, sustain unnecessarily to kind of like a more generalized response to them all. Okay, so, um, so basically there are like, there are four answers, um, well, three answers, one kind of premise um, that we need to understand. The premise is like all, what all these negative, unpleasant emotions, moods, states, and some of us it's a state which lasts, you know, months, years, what they have in common is that basically it's us telling ourselves in some way, on some level, reality is not the way we'd like it to be, okay? And, and like we are conditioned somehow by our society, our parents and stuff, to when we don't get what we want, to, to react you know, by becoming upset. Again, if we were a toddler, you know, or an infant, we have to be that way because we don't have language and we don't have the means of addressing our wants and needs. But as we get older, especially as adults, these emotional states become far less necessary, far less productive. And so like, again, the, the first, the premise of this is like, you know, all these negative emotions, you know, they have to do with our irrational, unnecessary, unproductive response of saying to ourselves, well, you know, reality isn't the way we want it to be. And again, so the idea is like, well, reality doesn't have to be the way we want it to be for us to be very happy, for us to be free of these, and, and really literally free to a great extent. And we might have them like that come up, um, you know, just very briefly, but we can quickly overcome them. And we want to, we really want to be free of these unpleasant emotional states that like in, in decades or at least by in a hundred years, they're, they're going to be seen not as, you know, normal or natural as we see them now. They're going to actually be seen as the illness as they are. <laughs> they're, they're really delusional kind of like they're, they're, they're symptoms of, of psychopathy. They're basically, you know, our, our, our individual and collective psyches just go to these just irrationally and, and they are illnesses. We'll eventually get to that. All right, so like, how do we respond to them? Um, again, the, there's three basic answers you want to remind yourself of. And then this like, you know, this is, this is, you know, this is supposed to be a kind of like a very productive, very kind of useful strategy that you can use it, you know, on a, uh, day to day and get better at it. So the first thing you want to do when these unpleasant emotions, feelings come up, you want to remind yourself that it is not necessary to sustain a feeling of sadness or a feeling of anger or a feeling of fear, that these unpleasant emotions are not necessary, okay? And what tells you that is like you could have two people, you know, experiencing the exact same thing, watching a movie or something or listening to somebody say something or do something. And one person, you know, reacts very strongly, negatively, you know, with unpleasant emotions. The other person doesn't. All right. So if one person can just not get sucked into that, the other person can also. All right. So like, so the first part of this is that unpleasant sustaining again, because like, you know, these emotions do serve a purpose when we have them immediately. But actually, you know, having said that, we, we can really 
you know, for most of what happens, we don't even have to go to these emotions. We can like, you know, somebody saying something, somebody's doing something, something happens. We don't really have to actually even become emotional, negatively emotional to address them. But, you know, to the extent that we're not there yet, we want to like under, first understand they're not necessary. The second reminder we want to apply when, when these, you know, negative emotions happen is that they are not helpful, okay? You know, uh, and this is, again, this is a throwback to when we were um, infants, young children. It worked back then. We would, we would cry, we would yell, we would scream. And very often, especially when we were very, very young, we'd get what we wanted or needed. So, like, somehow, as individuals, as a civilization, we are, like, we're stuck in that, in that state, you know, thinking that, like, if we become angry or afraid or sad, as adults to what happens, it's going to be helpful. All right, granted, I mean, sometimes, you know, sometimes if we become afraid, let's say, you know, um, we haven't um, paid our ele electricity bill or something, right? So, yeah, it's afraid that, like, you know, you know, and you become afraid, well, if I don't pay this bill, they're going to shut off the electricity, right? So, like, that's, you know, sometimes these negative emotions motivate us to do the things we need to do. Fine, okay? But, again, the, the stronger point is that, like, we don't have to go to them. It should, we should be able to, like, cognitively realize that if, for example, we don't pay the electricity bill and they cut it off, then, you know, it's not going to, it's going to lead to less, more unpleasant feelings, perhaps. But, all right, so, again, um, the... Um, the second statement is the, these unpleasant, sustained unpleasant emotions are just generally not helpful. Okay, so you've got they're not necessary, they're not helpful. And the third statement that you want to remind yourself of is that ordinarily, you know, when, when we're addressing something, when, when, we, when we react to something with these unpleasant feelings, it generally makes matters worse, okay? You know, somebody says something to you. You're, you're arguing with your spouse, your mate, your friend or something, right? And you become emotional. Well, guess what? All of a sudden, whatever you're having to deal with is, is becoming a lot more difficult to deal with, okay? So fine, like you, you might like want to, you might get angry at something that someone does, right? But again, like, that happens for an instant. After that, there is, you know, these unpleasant emotions that we tend to sustain. We think that they're helpful. Um, they actually really are harmful. Again, so again, the third statement is that, you know, basically sustaining these unpleasant emotions, not only is it, are they not necessary or helpful, they actually generally make matters worse. Okay, so like, you know, so now we've got these, you know, these three statements we use. And, and the, the, the key then is like, well, how are we going to apply them to our lives? Or it's, with, it's like with anything else. Like, you know this. You probably knew this before I said it. It's common sense, right? So I don't think I'm saying anything new. But the problem is that, fine, we may know this. You, you may have heard this. But in order for you to use it in your life to become more enlightened, to overcome these unpleasant emotions, you have to develop some means of integrating this knowledge, you know, in, in some manner, it's through some technique. For example, like one thing you can do is um, on your phone, your, your phone, your, your mobile phone will have a little um, note thing. Sometimes there's a reminder, like every hour or two or three, you might be reminded or something. Just jot, you know, jot down these three statements. Unpleasant emotions are not necessary. Unpleasant emotions are not helpful. Unpleasant sustaining again. Unpleasant um, negative emotions usually make things worse. So like if you were to like put, you know, these three statements on your phone and review them, you know, three, four, five, ten times a day, you know, at various times, right? It, does, it takes like less than a minute, you know, then over time, you would get it. Over time, you know, what, ha what would happen is like you'd, you'd find yourself getting sucked into one of these unpleasant emotions and you would be reminded of these, these statements. You would be reminded of how unnecessary it is to go there. I mean, it's unpleasant. I mean, that's obvious too. You don't want to go there, obviously. So you'd be reminded of how it's just not helpful and it usually makes matters worse to go there. So that's, that's basically what you want to do. You, you want to kind of like cultivate the habit 
to automatically respond to these negative, unpleasant emotions by realizing, reminding yourself that they are just, they're, <laughs> it's wrong, they're irrational, they're, they're dysfunctional, <laughs> they're, they're bad. All right, so, um, okay, we got about seven minutes left. Now, all right, fine, this is, this is important, you know, um, part, of, part of how we're raised is like from very early on in school, we're, we're learned to problem solve. Everything is like achieve something, you know, overcome some problem. We can't walk while we're crawling, so we got to learn how to walk. We can't talk, oh, we got to learn how to talk. You know, always like there's a problem and a solution. And, and that's how, you know, and this continues through school, you know, we're given math problems, we're given all these kinds of problems, you know, to develop these skills. And the problem with that, I mean, that, you know, that, that's very productive in a lot of ways, right? But the problem is that many of us go through life, you know, looking for problems. It's not only, or, or like, you know, you know, I mean, the, the world is imperfect. It's not going to be perfect for, any, <laughs> for a while, all right? And our lives, we're not going to be perfect for you know, any time soon. But because of this mindset, we're constantly seeking problems to solve. And again, it's good you know, that we do that to a certain extent, but too many of us are stuck in that mode. So, so what I just want to say, along with like addressing these unpleasant emotions by, again, reminding us, ourselves that they're not necessary, helpful, and they usually make things worse, you know, basically we want to balance that. We don't want to be doing that all the time. And what I mean, and I've done shows on this, I'm going to sh do other shows on this, is like to the extent that we can like address the other part of it, which is becoming happier and happier, the happier we become, the, the more we'll notice a tendency to want to protect that happiness. When something happens, you know, we will value and cherish that happiness to the extent that we won't let the, the, these circumstances, these, these events, you know, suck us into to feeling these unpleasant emotions. So again, that what I'm trying to say is that uh, to the extent we work on our happiness, on becoming happier, that's really what our primary work should be. And you know, this, this work of, on unpleasant emotions, we want to work on it so that it's habitual, but really, you know, it, what, you know our, our, our state shouldn't be to, to constantly try to be doing that, you know. Um, we, can, we can achieve a, um, a similar result to a great extent by, um, by, again, just getting better and better at feeling happier. All right, what else? Or now, now, relative to Buddhism, we only have like about four minutes left or so, but uh, just basically the Buddha got, you know, he addressed this, un this, um, this suffering stuff, you know, because unpleasant emotions is about suffering. And like he, he ha came up with these four noble truths, but he didn't get it completely right. So we're going to correct it for him now. All right, so basically the first noble truth is like, well, there is suffering in life. You can't argue with that. Yes, we suffer. Well, you know, everybody suffers, right? All right, the second noble truth is that suffering comes from attachments, okay, from cravings, from desires, which is basically a way of saying, like, suffering comes from our wanting reality to be other than how it is, okay? So, so the Buddha got this, but here's where he went wrong. The, the third noble truth, it's, it's kind of like a non-truth, you know, it's basically the third noble truth is, well, there is a way to overcome this suffering. You know, so that, that shouldn't have had to have been said, right? What, what, what he should have said as his third noble truth is, well, the way to overcome this suffering, if, if it's caused by these attachments, these cravings, these desires, is to overcome. Stop wanting. Stop desiring. You know, stop, stop wanting things to be better and just start enjoying what is. Because that's the key. Fine. So, like, all right. So, and then the, the, the fourth noble truth, you know, because like basically this fourth noble truth, the way he frames it is like, well, the way to overcome suffering is this eightfold path, right action, right speech, right conduct, right, right thoughts and all this stuff. And it's, it's kind of like basically religion. It's like all this stuff that we need to do. And it's not that it's, you know, it is beneficial because basically we want to derive our happiness in ways that are ethical, that aren't at the expense of other people or that, you know, are wise, that don't lead to, to greater suffering for us in the future. But so like 
So this fourth noble truth is very important, but it's, it's just basically about like achieving our happiness, overcoming our suffering in ways that are eth ethical and wise. Okay, so, so again, instead of this third noble truth <laughs> where he says, you know, there is an answer to the suffering, it should have been and it should be because, you know, I, I, we could probably amend this. You know, maybe in a hundred years they'll, they'll, be, they'll do this because, you know, I mean, he did, he, the, the Four Noble Truths, he, he, the Buddha got it. He really, you know, he honed in on, on everything, but he didn't get it completely right. So again, this Third Noble Truth should be, well, the way to overcome the suffering is to overcome the attachments. And again, that's what this episode is about. The way to, or to overcome the suffering is to, well, to a certain extent, not be attached to the feelings. We're in a, to a great extent, we're addicted to these feelings, you know, as, as individuals in society. Uh, we need to overcome that. All right, um, got about a minute left, and there's other stuff that I wanted to say, but, but I, think, I think, you know, I think I've covered it enough. Again, you know, just don't believe that these unpleasant emotions are either necessary are helpful and understand that more often they're not, than not, they are harmful. They harm you physiologically, psychologically. They don't, don't allow you to address whatever you need to address in the best manner. So again, if you, if you condition yourself to remind yourself of these three statements, you can overcome them, these unpleasant emotions far better. And as you do that, you can become more enlightened. And as you become more enlightened, you can enlighten your friends, and your friends can enlighten their friends, and their friends can enlighten their friends. And all of a sudden, we have a very enlightened um, world where people are experiencing these negative emotions far less, and, and everyone's much happier. Okay, so um, I guess that's it for today. So, you know, in future episodes, we're going to explore. Um, more aspects of this, you know, concept of enlightenment. Okay, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. Basically, we we would become afraid and that fear was a messenger to us that something in, envir in our environment needs to be other than how it is, okay? So, so the Buddha got this, but here's where he went wrong. The, the third noble truth, it's, it's kind of like a non...